Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because we are definitely in unprecedented times, are we not? Think about a year ago today, what you were doing, where you were at, and we can't even, I mean, you just can't even make this up. <laughs> Who prophesied about 2020 again? We need to talk to them. We got some stuff to talk about. No, but seriously, the thing is, this is the most exciting time. Seriously, guys, we've been waiting for these days forever. And now we get to make a difference on the earth because God is breathing on his people. The church is waking up. The people of God are rising up. I mean, seriously, for a governor to have to say, you can't meet and you can't sing, that tells me the church is doing something. I think Don pointed that out. You wouldn't tell something to stop doing something if it wasn't making a difference. So I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we get to be a part of it. So um, I'm going to, Chris has a word, and I'm going to get her to come up, and then we will. I love the spirit of joy that's in here tonight. Yes. Be Amen. Because the word that the Lord gave me, there's a piece in it about being excited about where we're going. And, and I really felt like it was a word for tonight. And then when that spirit of joy was released during worship, I thought, this is a word for tonight, and, and I know I need to hear it again, and I think we all need to hear it again. And it's got a practicality to it, too, a something for us to do. The scripture that it came from is 1 Peter chapter 3. It says, who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Yeah. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated, yes. but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yes, amen. And I feel like the Lord is saying the time is now. You have rested and now you must rise. Amen. Get up, go out. Wherever you are, speak of me and what I am doing. Relational doors that were once closed will now be open. Hard hearts that you had given up on are now softening. Amen. Do not be discouraged by the deception in some that you see turning to depravity. I continue to expose that which is unlawful, but I also continue to reveal my truth and the next steps of our kingdom march together. Be excited about where we are going. No matter the opposition, we are advancing. And then during that song, amen, amen. There, was, um, there was something in that song that said, I will praise him for what he's already done but they were headed out to battle. Right. That's the faith that says, I know I've already won, so I will praise you in advance for what you've already Amen. done because I get to be alive on the earth right now to fight the battle that you prepared ahead of time for me to fight. Amen. If the good works that God has given us ahead of time to fight are a battle, are we engaged? Are we those who shrink back? We are not no. those who shrink no. back. We are Amen. those who go forward with our Amen. king. Um, there's a verse that in Hebrews that says, "For." For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. That's what Christ did for us. He already did what he's doing now in us. He already perfected what he's now perfecting in us. And that's the faith that we can have with all of our circumstances that we, can, that we see around us. Be excited about where we're going. No matter the opposition, we are advancing. You have rested, now rise. Get up, go out, share the kingdom wherever you are. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a great word. That is a great word. Father, I thank you for that word, Lord. I thank you, Father. And as Chris was given it, I could just feel your presence all around, Father. I can feel the fire of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I thank you that we will be ones that will not shrink back, but we will go forward. For God, you called us in this season and this hour to be your light, to be your salt, to be your hands and to be your feet. Father, this is just the beginning, not the ending. This is the beginning of the great awakening, the third great awakening on the earth, Father God. Your church is coming up. It's rising up out of the ashes. And and there are good shepherds right now that are taking a stand all over America to stand 
out and saying, Father, you're releasing the messengers to go forth and prophesy the direction we are going. Father, I thank you that your church will be without spot, without beyond wrinkle and blemish. Father, these are the greatest days of the church. Father, though the earth is getting dark, the light of God is coming upon the people of God to show your great glory. You have a future and a hope and you have a plan. And Father, we are included in that. Father, we are the ones that you said in these last days, like Daniel, would shine like the stars of heaven, Father, because we will carry the kingdom, the good news of Jesus crucified and risen again. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you will make us all light bearers for you in Jesus' name. So um, I'm going to call Nathan up here. Uh, and by the way, I'm Joanna Intrican, Nathan's wife. I forget. And we're at Impact Ministry Center. <laughs> I forget the, the small details. And we're in Holly Springs. And yeah, these things that are up mean nothing. I get in a zone. I'm like, where am I? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Anyways, Nathan, if you want to come up and do announcements. And this is why I don't do announcements. Because I'd be like, there's stuff to do. And yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Squirrel. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, welcome, everybody, to Impact Ministry Center, uh, Impact Thursday night. My name is Nathan Intrican, and that is my lovely wife. And um, I'm one of the ministers here, so uh, welcome again. And um, we are located at 2260 Holly Springs Parkway in Holly Springs, Georgia, right up on the top of the hill, Suite 140. Would love for you to come by and join us in person for those that are online and uh, look forward to seeing you here. Um, you know, what are we? We are a uh, training and equipping center. Uh, that definition is constantly changing, what that means. So right now we're in, uh, we're, we're in uncharted territory as we were just talking about. And, uh, you know, Chris, even what, what you were saying, and I was, uh, I was listening, you know, to all the worship tonight, and it was about God, you know, taking over for us, for, for us all. You know, he's the one that's going to fight our, our, our battles. You know, in that Psalm 46, that song was just, was just getting me. And I mean, you know, we don't need to stand and uh, we, we don't need to be afraid. We need to realize that this is all in God's plan. This is all in God's handbook. And, um, you know, we're just here. What we have to do is remain in faith, knowing that he's going to guide us through. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things that, that we want to um, point out. Uh, we do have offering buckets, and they're lo strategically located in the corners of the room. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it if uh, the Lord leads you to, uh, um, you know, give something. And uh, you can also give online uh, at uh, impactministrycenter.com, and uh, there's a, a PayPal link on there, so you can, you can don donate there as well. Uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Uh, but just to let you know a couple of things that are going on around here, um, obviously, we, we do have our main service here on Thursday. Uh, we are also, uh, let's see, if this, uh, James, can you highlight PowerPoint for me? There you go. Um, this starting on Wednesday night and August 5th, we're going to be having the Courts of Heaven Academy, and uh, that is going to be uh, run by Nancy uh, Lamborn. I encourage you to come out, uh, take a look at that, and uh, but it's a, a, obviously you, you can read as, as well as I. It's a foundations course uh, uh, that's an eight-week study group, and um, Lord, do, do you have any more information about that? Like, what's it, what's it going to be covering the courtrooms of heaven. There you go. How to, <laughs> I don't know exactly what that in, in, entails, but anything that, that Nancy does has, uh, I mean, is just amazing and usually brings uh, all kinds of uh, deliverance and will set you free. Yes, Joanna? It's the teaching probably from Robert Henderson. Most of y'all are familiar with That's courtrooms what I was of assuming, heaven. But I didn't know. Yeah. And so um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm assuming that her curriculum, but. Stand closer uh, here. Oh, yeah, the camera. The Sorry. The See, I'm terrible. I'm a mess. Yeah. So it, it's um, because the Lord has given a lot of wisdom through this teaching of how to into prayer and tying into inner healing and deliverance, but also in this season with our nation and how we're battling over certain strongholds. And we can realize where the enemy has a right 
to come in and take dominion, but we have authority over him, but we have to find out what that key is to unlock. A lot of times it's repentance. But anyway, this this teaching is very good, and the Lord has used many. Someone prayed over me before my second surgery. I had two hips, if you don't know, but anyway. My second surgery was a little bit of an animal, but anyway, if they had not prayed over me, I don't think I'd be walking because they prayed through this prayer, and they hit some things that I knew I was up against, and they got it. We prayed. We broke it, and that thing, those things didn't come back. So I really do believe in the revelation um, of this. So it's, it's a great, great teaching. Exactly what she said. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yes, so that's going to be starting on Wednesdays, uh, August 5th through September 23rd at 7 to 8.30. Uh, oh, oh, did you need me to go, go back one? Okay, go, go back one, James, since the clicker's not working, obviously. Oh, yes, and you do have to, have to register. Text Nancy, and her phone number's right there. Okay, all right, next slide, please. All right, and then also, uh, Impact Ministry Center, we're going to be uh, uh, hosting uh, David Hebner, and I don't know if you, any of you guys have heard of him or not, but he does this uh, fantastic show called David Hebner Live, and he has this show every Monday from uh, 8 to 9 p.m. Well, he's going to be meeting here for several of those broadcasts, and now not this coming Monday, but the Monday following, so it's going to be the 27th. And so, uh, but what, what's going to happen is uh, he'll, he'll come here, uh, you can meet at 7, and you can discuss what's going to be, uh, what the show is going to be about, and then uh, starting right at uh, 8 o'clock, he'll literally do the broadcast of the show right here. And, uh, you, you know, um, you can um, see it done right right here. It's an amazing thing. And I, I tell you, he brings about uh, current events. He brings in guests, uh, guests that he interviews. And uh, just, just an incredible um, man of God. And I tell you, he has uh, his, his testimony is, I mean, he's done, I don't know how many, 50, 50 something films in in Hollywood and uh, and so he um, he literally has unique insight to what's happening in this day and hour and uh, just this last time uh, I guess it was two weeks ago when he was here and did the uh, did the broadcast amazing the insights that he had to the current situation that's 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 going on so uh, since he does a lot of traveling and goes around a lot he he actually is able to talk to several people and get all kinds of different different things. So it, it's really almost like an investigative reporter type thing, but it's it's done in a very awesome way and uh, full of faith and hope and really leads people to ask the questions uh, about, you know, why things are, are going on and, uh, you know, really wants to dig into it. You know, I, I remember this last time he was talking to someone, and he says, well, how does someone know they're hearing God? How do they know? Did you hear an audible voice when the Lord told you to do this? And wouldn't let the guy off the, off the phone or off the interview until he told him, you know, whether it was an audible voice or not, because he knows there's people in the audience that are asking these types of questions. And so um, it, it, was, it was really good. So I encourage you, um, if you want to just be a part of that. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, uh, just come out on the 27th and uh, join them for that, for that broad, broadcast, but it'll be right here. So uh, I think that's it. James, did I leave anything out? Okay, bring the clicker with me. I will do that. Okay, and so at this point, I shall ask Don to come up, but um, I, we have to get the clicker working too, so, but... Um, Oh, wait a second. Here we go. Now, now I can try. Oh, yep, it works. There you go, Don. Hand off. So, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this evening. We ask your blessings on it in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, as is my custom, I ask you to inspire our understanding of the scriptures we'll cover tonight. You know, you are the author. You are the one who preserved the transmission and, and got these words to us. So we just ask that you complete the message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Suffering in the plan of God. 
but before that, I do have a, a corporate word. Um, it's from Isaiah chapter 8. And I'm going to begin with verse 10. Devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. This is uh, speaking of Israel's enemies. But devise a plan, and it will be thwarted. State a proposal, but it will not stand, for God is with us. That song that was there, uh, we, we were hearing earlier, you know, the Lord of hosts is with us, God is with us. It says, for thus uh, the Lord spoke to me with a mighty power and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, you are not to say it is a conspiracy in regard to all that this people call a conspiracy. You are not to fear what they fear or be in dread of it. It is the Lord of hosts whom you are to regard as holy. It, and uh, he shall be your fear and he shall be your dread. Then he shall become a sanctuary. Don't you love that? Yeah. You know? I mean, one of the things about the time we're living in is conspiracy theories are abounding out there. I mean, and, you know, it's not that, you know, you don't see that, hey, maybe these things could be connected here, that, and so. Okay, maybe there's conspiracy, maybe there's not. But Isaiah was instructed to fear God, to dread him. And in so doing, the Lord becomes our sanctuary our place of rest, our place of refuge, guarding our hearts against anything that might come. Okay. All right, suffering in the plan of God. Um, I'm actually going to skip to some, th play, some stuff to come to here. God moves nations and times for his purposes. See, the one thing about the suffering, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what's going on out there? We got the coronavirus, we have riots, we have vandalism, we have all kinds of craziness going on in the government. And, and who, you know, you turn on the news and you say, can I trust this? And you think, probably not, but what information out there is reliable? And, and you know, suddenly, you know, you look and say, you know, I, things just aren't right. You know, one of, the, one of the questions you probably dread, if you, especially maybe now, is if you go and you're talking to someone and you start talking about God and that God is love, and you know the question that comes? How can a loving God allow this virus? How can a loving God allow racism? How can a loving God, how can a loving God, and on and on and on it goes. You know, now, I have been a student of the scriptures for for be 50 years this September, okay? And I'm a ponderer. I like to call myself a ponderer. I mean, I sit and I say, yeah, how does these things fit together and, and how does this help me be a disciple? Well, in my pondering about the suffering of God and my studying and in my going through the scriptures, um, I got in trouble once for saying this. I'm gonna still say it. <laughs> there is no permissive will of God. There's the will of God. Amen. Right? Amen. There's the will of God. And you say, well, well I mean, how, how can this be? Well, let me, let me just, um, let me just imagine you sitting down and writing a novel. And you're a good person. But you have evil people in your novel. Right? Does that make you evil? No. I mean, you have evil in your novels so that you can tell people what evil is, and you have good characters, and you have redemption. And actually, if you're an author, are you, or do you start from word one, and you write, 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 until you get to word end, the last word? Or maybe you say, you know, I know where this story is going, and I'm going to work on that. You know, actually, I like the ending. I'm going to write the ending now, and then a little bit later, I'm going to write the middle, and I'm going to write the beginning. But the thing is, you're the author, you're the creator, you are separate from your story, but that story nevertheless communicates who you are, okay? God is the creator of all of this. Yes. He's the author. Remember when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am? Yes. Right? What a strange thing to say, but what does it say? 
Jesus is present in the past. And that past is as real to him as you and I here in this room. Why? Because Jesus is the author. So we need, you know, the, the unique thing about the creation is that we have God as an author, and yes, he, there is pain, there's suffering, and there's redemption, and there's a story. And it's just that we are in this unique, we are these uniquely created beings that get to read the story as it goes along. We are creatures in the book, but we really live, and we are able to relate to the author. Okay, now I'm going to, when I say God moves in nations and times for his purposes, what I want to do tonight is really two things. I want to give you a broad picture of suffering that happened in the Old Testament and what God used that suffering to move all kinds of pieces into places to where we get to here for why we were so helpless at the right time. You ever wonder about that? What, what made it the right time? What made it the right time? Why wasn't the right time as soon as Adam and Eve sinned? Why was it so many years later? Okay, all right. All right. And then these great beasts, which are four in number, are four kings who arise from the earth. This is the book of Daniel, right? And here... The Lord is saying, you know, I'm going to raise up four kingdoms. You're already living in one of them now, Babylon. I'm going to raise up four kingdoms, and they are going to do things. Now, these, these scriptures are related, so let's... I'm going to um, begin with Isaiah 45. Um, for some reason, today has been a day... Of, I mean, I cannot tell you how many times this message has been changing been changing on the fly and was changing on me back there. Um, I was you know, taking things out, adding things, saying, and then I came in here and said, we need to add some of them back in. Anyway, I'm in Isaiah 45, all right? And I'm going to begin in verse 1. This says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed, whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him. Cyrus. Cyrus hasn't even been born when this was written. He wasn't going to be born for another 200 years. Wow. Okay? And yet, and, and notice what he says. I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will shatter doors of bronze and cut through their iron bones. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. 200 years, maybe it's 150, but it's more than a century, way in advance, God tells Isaiah, I am going to raise up a ruler, and his name is going to be Cyrus. Okay? Now, this is before Babylon. Now, I, so I'm going to talk, these four, these four beasts that Daniel's talking about, they're, the four empires are these, the Babylonian Empire, the Median Persian Empire, Alexander's Empire, the Greek Empire, and then the Roman Empire. All right. So I'm going to go through these, and I'm going to describe some things that God did. I'm going to begin with uh, the days of Jeremiah, the prophet. Um, Israel, the, the idolatry in Israel had reached the point where we were that close to losing the scriptures. I mean, it was bad. I mean, we, I mean, do you want to know how close we were? There was this king, eight-year-old boy named Josiah who became king. And he said, I want to clean up the temple. And they went and cleaned up the temple, and they found a book. It's the Bible. Idolatry was so rampant in that nation that the word of God was just about lost. Okay? As a matter of fact, I mean, I, I did the calculations. Israel, at that time, I call it a 1,400-year addiction to idolatry. Okay? Now, they worshiped Yahweh. It's just that they would burn their children before Moloch, and then they'd come into the temple and say, Oh, Yahweh, you know, praise you, and, and so forth. So here's what God did. It's very interesting. Nebuchadnezzar, 
the ruler of Babylon. He goes into Jerusalem, shakes things up, and suddenly a bunch of young royals are carted off to Babylon. Picture yourself as a parent. Oh, my goodness, my kids have just been carted off to Babylon. They're going to be trained as Chaldeans. What are they going to do about, about their faith in God? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego are among those. And suddenly, and Daniel rises to be next to Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? But you see, that was a tragedy. I mean, their kids were kidnapped. Several years later, Nebuchadnezzar comes and sends another uh, incursion, and he takes off their king, Jehoiakim, and 10,000 craftsmen, and he carts them off to Babylon. And again, this is a tragedy. I mean, we've, we've lost workers, we've lost people, and so forth. But those 10,000 craftsmen begin building communities in Babylon. And you say, well, I mean, why, why is this good? Well, I'll tell you why it's good. Jeremiah writes a letter to that, that community. And the refrigerator verse is there. I know the plans I have for you. Okay. Those of you who, and, and actually even says, those of you who I sent into exile into Babylon, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for prosperity, and I will return you to this place. But see, this, this is a dislocation. This is, I mean, you look at the dislocation, and it's not fun. It's not fun to be dislocated. Now, Jeremiah had another message in Jerusalem. You stay in this city, it's pestilence, it's the sword, it's famine. Oh, but you know what? God created a place for you. So when Nebuchadnezzar comes to destroy the city because of its sin, because of its idolatry and so forth, Jeremiah's in the city. This is Jeremiah chapter 38. He says, you want to save your life? Go to the Chaldeans, because I've created a place for you where you can go. Nobody had to die. Nobody had to suffer in Jerusalem because God had so arranged things that there was a place where they could go. And then here's the amazing thing. Seventy years later, Cyrus shows up. Cyrus, remember him? Cyrus shows up. And not only that, but a, but a bunch of the idolaters were wiped out in Jerusalem with Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar came. And when Cyrus came, it's like, you know, this God who we have been worshiping really is God. And the Jewish people in a 70-year period became a monotheistic people. The 1,400-year addiction to idolatry was broken. And do you know, what, how, do you know how long 70 years is? I'm 70 years old. Okay, I mean, I, I, I'm here to tell you that actually the way the timing works is that if I was a young man, you know, if the, the Babylonian exile had occurred when I was, when my son Aaron was born, my grandson Asher was the one who returned as a Yehudi, as a praiser of God, as a Jew. So through Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, through wars, dislocation, famine, pestilence, and so forth, God broke a 1,400-year a addiction to idolatry and created a people. Now, what does Cyrus do? Well, I, I think it was Daniel who went to Cyrus and said, you know, here's our prophet that mentioned you by name. And he, by the, oh, look at this. He says, you're going to send his people back. So guess, guess what Cyrus did? He sent his people back. All right? But again, Cyrus, war is dislocation, right? Then Alexander the Great, he decides it would be a great idea to conquer the world. And I mean, this guy was brilliant. He managed to do this by the time he was 36. Okay? So by the time he was 36, he conquered the world, but he loved Greek culture. And he said, you know what? The world is going to speak Greek. I mandated, y'all are going to start speaking Greek. <laughs> and I, I mean, this guy had to, had, had to have some sort of charisma because everybody said, well, that's a great idea. So they all began speaking Greek. 
And these newly monotheistic Jewish rabbis got together and said, you know what? We're going to translate our scriptures into Greek. It's called the Septuagint. And, not, and because, because the whole world was speaking Greek and, and there was a Bible in Greek, the Gentiles began to read the Greek Bible and they began to have a knowledge of God. Okay, so, but again, wars, dislocation, and edicts, you know, executive orders, you're going to speak Greek. Right? Then Rome comes along and they build roads. You know, the Roman roads are still there. I mean, they built good roads. And they also established this thing called the Pax Romana, which is the peace of Rome. They, they actually worked it out that travel was relatively easy and relatively safe. So let's go to here then. The Great Beast. The emergence of Babylon brought wars and exile, but it was instrumental in fashioning a monotheistic people that preserved the scriptures because we almost lost them. So Babylon did that, or God did that through Babylon. The emergence of the Median Persian Empire brought wars and conquest, but Cyrus allowed a return of the exiles as predicted by Isaiah in Isaiah 44 and 45, and Jerusalem and the temple were rebuilt. The emergence of the Greek Empire brought wars and conquests. Alexander mandated that the world speak Greek, but Jewish scholars translated the scriptures into Greek. Gentiles began to read the scriptures, and many Gentiles became intrigued with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then Rome built the roads. So at the right time, look at this. Jesus was born at a time when the Jews were monotheistic because of Babylon. The Jews lived in their homeland because of Cyrus. The scriptures had been translated, and, uh, and this, by the way, is our New Testament books are all written in Greek. Yes. Right? It's because of Alexander the Great. But it's also the scripture, the Jew, Gentiles already had a basic knowledge of God so that when the gospel went to the Gentiles, they, it wasn't strange for them. And the roads provided safe travel. Everything was in place for the dissemination of the gospel to the world. Okay. Now this, I, I just want to give you this because we, you know, none of these people, the, the, the parents of Daniel, when Daniel was carted off, they didn't know the end. They didn't know the end from the beginning. You know, those 10,000 people who were carted off to Babylon, they didn't know what was going on. They're in the midst of it. It's only that we now can look back and see the broad scope of what God was doing. Mm. Okay, so the question to you is, does God know what he's doing now? Of course, yes. Right? I mean, I mean, we may not be able to see it, but God is using these things, and you may find yourself dislocated. You may find yourself here, this, here, there, and other. You may find yourself sick, you may find yourself in, impoverished, you may find yourself in all kind of hurt, but God knows what he is doing. Someone mentioned, and I, I can't believe how God has set up this evening, because someone, you know, Joanna's up here and, and Chris is up here saying, the joy in this room. Okay, Look up the scriptures in the New Testament that speak about suffering. Joy is there all the time. Yeah. Amen. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. In this you rejoice, even though for a little while, if necessary, you are encountering various, suffer various sufferings. Consider it, you, you considered it, um, oh, me, was, um, you reacted with joy at the seizure of your property. This is in, in Hebrews chapter 10. You considered it joy at the seizure of your property, knowing that you have a better possession and a lasting one. Okay. So you, the whole point here is you need to understand and you need to trust God and his wisdom, even though personally it may cost you a great deal. At the same time, you have the spirit, you have his anchor, you have his joy. 
the joy of the Lord really is your strength, which brings me to what I really want to talk about today. But you've, you've heard this from me. I probably began speaking of these five wisdom points at least three years ago and maybe four. And I've always been laying these out as these are the five wisdom points for the days ahead. And they're very, very easy to remember. There's only five of them. And I'm going to explain them in a little more detail, not, not taking a lot of time. But the five wisdom points for the days ahead are C, that you are not frightened. C, that you are not deceived. Seek the glory of God over your own Speak from the councils, and you need to note the spelling there because there's council has two under council. Sometimes is I'm going to give you some counsel, but then there's I'm going to attend a council, and this is the latter. Speak from the councils of God. Speak from what God is planning and doing, and apprehend the city of God. So, let me expand these on these just a little bit. Jesus said. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened. Now, what does it mean when he says, see that? See, this, that, that's the most important phrase here. Because it basically says, don't leave not being afraid to chance. Do some advanced planning. You know, and what that means for me is that every time there is a bump in the road, I mean, and right now, 2020, is boot camp, right? It's your boot camp. Face the things that are going on and see that you get to the place where you are no longer frightened by them. Now, that's one of the reasons why I began like it did this evening. Here's how God's plans, you know, go out. But the thing is, is that Jesus commanded, see that you are not frightened, because he goes on to say, for these things must take place. But that is not yet the end, for nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. And note this, but these are merely the beginnings of birth pangs. My Christian brothers and sisters, we have not seen anything yet. Okay? I mean, if we are, if, if the Great Tribulation is on the horizon, you know, we, we've got to be ready. By the way, there is not a pre-tribulation rapture that's going to take you out of this. We have a job to do, yeah. okay, which is one of the reasons why I hammer this so much. So see that you are not frightened. Things are going to get very, very bad, but the thing is, is you have the Holy Spirit, and I would also recommend to read books uh, about Jim Elliott, but especially, I mean, my high, most highly recommended book ever in terms of this is The Hiding Place by, by Corey Ten Boom. Because you do not get any more ordinary than a 55-year-old unmarried daughter of a clockmaker who, because of God's compassion, when a Jew comes to her door in Holland during the Nazi occupation and needed a place to stay, said, come on in. And the next thing you know, she is part of the underground, and she is, you know, she's part of a, a system to, to aid Jews and so forth, but then she's, she is captured, discovered, captured, and sent to a concentration camp where the entire rest of her family dies. But do you know what she did when she came out? She started a ministry to the guards of the concentration camps. Okay? I mean, the ordinary person who, because of extraordinary events and the Spirit of God and His compassion, rises to something extraordinary. That is our destiny. Right? Okay. See that you're not deceived. Jesus said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and will mislead many. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe him, for false messiahs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance, so if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Behold, he's in the inner rooms. Do not believe them. 
For just as lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Is there deception out there? Have you listened to the news? Right. I mean, I mean it's, it's hard to know the truth these days. But we as Christians with the Holy Spirit, I will tell you, we will have a sense for what is right or at least how to respond to things. Yes. And this is very, very important. Um, I itemized four things that are, are to me, are uniquely, are, are, are unique deceptions that are aimed at the church today. Okay? And the first one is, the church is weakening and not effective. Okay? Right? right? You know, there could be a revival raging outside the CNN Center. Okay, they could be baptizing tens of thousands of people outside their doors and all the newscasters are going in and out. Is it going to be reported? No. No. Okay. Do you know why opposition to Christianity is rising? Because we're effective and Satan is scared. That's right. So that's, that's an area... Do not think the church is weak. Do not think the church is ineffective. Do not think the church is failing because we're not. The other one's a little more subtle, but it, it really is important, and that is the place of Israel in prophecy. The Jews have a right to that land, and many, many prophecies concerning the end time concern Israel, and there are some in the church as well as outside of the church that say that the Jews have no claim to the land. That is another lie, and it, 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 it's, it's one that we need to avoid. Um, and then the other does have to do with the fact that we need to be aware of who, who we listen to. Okay, and just again, this requires discernment, and it requires a connection to the Spirit. Okay. Seek the glory of God. One of the things that I do think is going to happen as, as things really get moving is that us common folk are going to see some God do extraordinary things through our prayers, through our laying on of hands, through, what, you know, through our agency. And I'm telling you that if that happens, like if you, you know, someone's dead at your feet and you say, in Jesus' name, rise up, you need to make sure that people who see that say, God raised to that person from the dead. Make sure your name's not there. Right? 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 All right? Jesus says it this way, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. What you do needs to bring glory to God, and you are responsible for having such an attitude within yourself that it's the most natural thing that you do your work for the kingdom, and God gets the glory. If you come up to me and tell me, you know, you're you're a pretty good teacher. I will tell you, do you, know, do you ever notice that I pray for the Holy Spirit to inspire our understanding? Who's the teacher here? Right? Who's the teacher? Okay. Speaking from the counsels of God. This is from Jeremiah, and it, it impressed the heck out of me when I read it. And it, it deals also with deception, because very often, in a, like a time like this, you know, the people of God, the, the Prophets of God will be speaking a truth, and then there'll be these counter prophets that are saying exactly the opposite. Okay? So, this is what God has to say about all of this. They keep saying to those who despise me, The Lord has said, You will have peace. This, by the way, is when Nebuchadnezzar is coming to destroy the city. You're going to have peace. Um, and as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say, Calamity will not come upon you. But who has stood in the council of the Lord? His meeting, his planning session. Who has stood there? That he should see and hear his word. Well, who has given heed to his word and listened? So one of the reasons, one of the ways of getting into the council of God is when you hear his word, you listen to it and heed it. But anyway, 
Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath, even a whirling tempest. And our song earlier this evening, remember, talked about the storm, right? Um, it will swirl down on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and carried out the purposes of his heart. In the last days, you will clearly understand it. Okay, we're close to the last days, so we're, it's about time where we can begin to understand this. I did not send these prophets, but they ran. I did not speak to them, but they prophesied. But this is the word for us. If they had stood in my counsel, they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. What is God doing on the earth? Okay? I mean, one of, well, I'll tell you that the people here, they know, and they're speaking it. What is God doing on the earth? Because when we speak this, even when it is a hard, hard, hard world word, people will listen, and it will quicken their spirit, and they will be saved. That's why we speak from the counsels of God, what he is, he is doing, because according to Jeremiah, that will cause people to turn from their ways. And then finally, apprehend the city of God. Remember I told you God's writing a book of creation? It's got an ending. It's the new Jerusalem, the city of God. Jesus reigning on the earth, justice on the earth, peace on the earth. Satan bound so he can't deceive us anymore. But in Hebrews it says, all these died in faith without receiving the promises. But having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, this is what I mean by apprehending the city of God. You see where it's going. And even if you are dead before it comes, you welcome it. Because that's what Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah did. And having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, for those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they had went out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Okay. Five wisdom points. See that you're not frightened. See that you're not deceived. Seek the glory of God. Speak the counsel, speak from the counsels of God and apprehend the city of God. Pursue those things in the days ahead. As the shakings come, pursue these things and you will not be found wanting in the slightest bit in service to the kingdom of God. You know, you're all his champions. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for these words and, and for the wisdom that you have given us. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you impart these truths to everyone who is in this room and those who are listening uh, through Facebook and Zoom. And just build us up. Give us, you know, strengthen us with power in the inner man. And give us a firm knowledge of Jesus and the times ahead and his counsels. And let us move the gospel forward. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I hear the Father saying, to the American church, I say tonight, my children, my dear children, I love you, but great persecution has come to your land. For I have sent this persecution to awaken you up to your true potential. For it was in the days when you were weak and in the days that, that you were mild that my heart hovered over you, desiring you to be red hot. And though I called and I sent the prophets, you did not heed and you did not listen. But know this, my children in America, I love you.
And it is because of my dear love for you that I have allowed Satan to come and sift you in this season to awaken you out of your sleep and out of your slumber. And yes, the nations are railing against you in this hour and season, but do not be afraid of them. For my love inside of you is greater than all the threats of the evil one. For I live on the inside of you. But know this, Church of America, I am raising up a beautiful beautiful bride in the midst of thee for you will not be chastised for long for you will come up and you will be who I declare you to be for there is much work for you to do in the land for I have a place for you in these last days it is to give you that hope in the future it's not for destruction but you must awake fully out of your sleep and out of your slumber because where we are going we are running we are running because many do not know me and I have equipped you to evangelize the world. For I've anointed you for this call. And I've anointed you for this purpose. And the gates of hell will not prevail against that which is my ecclesia. So do not be afraid and do not be in fear. But lay close to me. And together we will accomplish all that I desire for you. For America, you will rise up out of the ashes. And you will be a glorious bride. The American American church you will be one and you will be unified you will be many and diverse and I enjoy all of this but stay close to me in this season and I will lead you and I will guide you in all your ways in Jesus name thank you father thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you know there's a lot of things we can take for granted in one season and I've done it I've done it and um but you see in a new season how valuable those are and that those are, are, are weapons. Like I absolutely love worship, but I'm not a worshiper and in the sense that I have a gift and a talent with it. And so sometimes I kind of would take for granted worship because I'm not gifted that way. I love worship, but, but now that's a problem. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but there's power in worship. If we can imagine. And then the local meeting. You know, all of a sudden, you know, we can go with, and you get kind of like, well, I can watch online. I can do this. No, no judgment. We can do that. But when that's removed, we realize the power of coming together with one another. Where two or more agree, he is there in our midst. So these are weapons that the enemy strategically was keeping us apart. But the beauty is Satan thought he was pulling one over when he crucified Jesus. He thought, we kill this man and we're out of here. I have won. But that was the very thing that was going to cause the kingdom of God to be our reality. And I believe in the same way the enemy has come to shut our meetings, to shut the praise, to keep us apart. We realize that we need each other. We're going to worship. We're going to stand up. And we are not going to compromise. And we are not afraid to die for our faith. Because it is that city that Don talked about. That's where we got to look now, church. We got to think about our eternal reward, not so much our earthly call. It's a part of it, and it'll get us to the next day. But earthly calls will fail you sometimes in seasons like this. If you have a prophecy that says you're going to do this or that, but it really doesn't fit that season. But this eternal call, the city that's coming, is closer than we think. That will get us through these seasons. That's where we got to plug in. So um, I'm, I'm encouraged, and, and I'm not, I, I am just like you. I have daily struggles. It's awesome being in here with you guys, but we leave here, and there are demons out there, and they are nice. So, um, and we can't forget our authority. That's the other thing. This is a season you need to take your authority, and you don't take any, I mean, don't allow him. I had one pastor said, a bird can fly over your head, but don't let him build a nest. So do not take your authority for granted. You stand on the word of God. You stand on the word of God because that will be your place and your refuge. So, okay, we're going to shift in to the prophetic portion. Um, I'm sensing a few of you have some corporate words. And um, I know Chris has some personal prophecies. So I thought we might start with um, Michelle. Do you have a word? <laughs> I knew it. Yay. 
<laughs> awesome. I, I can pick on her now because she loves me. I do love you. I used to not pick on her because she's so sweet, but now I pick on her. Well, when Nathan starts playing that music, oh, it's just so precious. And it speaks to all of us. I, I know it gets to your heart because it gets to my heart. And that's when I start hearing God talking. And I feel that um, he really wants us to just press in and just worship and worship at home, in the car, wherever we're at. Whenever you feel down and out or, you know, the least bit discouraged, just praise. Even if you don't feel like it, just put on that music. And then after a while, you'll feel like uh, singing. And, and uh, the, the scripture that I felt he gave me, which sometimes I, I look at the clock and I see 111 or 1111, and sometimes I set my my timer to it. And when it goes off, I'm like, ah, Deuteronomy 11:11. for the land that you're crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land full of mountains and valleys that drink rain from heaven. And I believe that we're crossing into some new territories and that God is going to provide for us and that we've got to rely from, from heaven, that rain from heaven to keep restoring us, that river of life. And um, <laughs> when Chris got up here and said what she said, and I think you, you or Chris once said something about boot camp, because um, I, yeah. I, I heard that, and I, and I didn't write it down, but it kept you know, going in the back of my mind, and I've, I've heard it so many times before. But the first word I felt him say is, children, the time is now. Didn't you say that? <laughs> Can you hear me calling you? Are you ready? Sharpen your weapons. Be ready. You are crossing over the Jordan and taking possession of the land on the other side. I've prepared you for such a time as this, which we've been, been hearing this. I know I've heard James say this as well. Don't ever think I've left you alone. I've equipped you for battle. You have all you need. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit welling up inside you. Don't be afraid. Do not fear for what is ahead. You've been in training. Go back to your training manual. And drink from my well when you start to feel weary. I will restore your strength. I promise. My word will not go void. My word is your weapon. And praise and worship starts the crumbling of the enemy, starting at their base camp. I, it will ricochet across the earth like tremors of an earthquake. Tell other believers to join in and be ready for the shaking like you've never seen before. You keep thinking that you're not ready for this. <laughs> However, I am with you and will never, ever forsake you. Put on my armor and take the first step. Then I will guide you the rest of the way. Stand firm on my truth. I am your rock. So get ready and listen for my call. Amen. That's awesome. I definitely think this is a season of battle and that, that he's creating warriors in us. You know, he's creating us to battle, whether it's in intercession or sharing the gospel or confronting a social issue. There's a lot, a lot of social issues out there. So um, does, um, let's see, have any more corporate words, Daniel? You have personal words? You'll get them. I trust. And we do welcome you guys, several of you are here. Um, come on, come on, come on. Um, I know that you guys have, there are a lot of people here with prophetic. And a lot of you say, like, you haven't gone through the school. Honestly, um, there's no one here tonight. If you have something, we want to hear what the Lord, I sense in my spirit that many of you here have been activated prophetically, maybe not in this house, but we receive you. So if you have something, please do. So I actually have two, so I'll try to be really fast. So when we were worshiping, I saw the river of life, and it was gushing in here really fast, just pouring and pouring and pouring, gushing in. And all of a sudden, I just saw these golden um, shep shepherd's rods just being poured out onto the floor. And so I just pulled up this real quick, and um, so I'm going to read this right here because I thought it was very interesting. It says, you, get, you also get a rod in scripture. It sometimes is a long rod without any shape. When I see this, I know that the Lord is referring to the rod that breaks the foundation. In the old days, before modern technology, they would break an old foundation using a rod. This is an apostolic function, and it involves discipline, smashing old mindsets and templates. Paul speaks of this rod confirming his apostolic authority in 1 Corinthians 4.21, it says, What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or an agape love and in the spirit of meekness? And then further confirming the rod is 
to be symbolic of the apostolic ministry, Moses carried such a rod, which the Lord used to do many signs and wonders. And this is what really spoke to me is apostolic and signs and wonders. God is speaking to Moses in Exodus 4.17, you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do signs. And so I just saw that, that we are in a time where that is for us, that the Lord is calling us to be um, moving in signs and wonders and to attack the kingdom of darkness to protect the people of God. Do you want me to go into the um, yeah. other one? Yeah. Okay. So the other one was, um, and I lost it, but that's okay. The other one was about, it was a word that it was, um, that I got back in 2016. And basically it was a vision of seeing a church building. And all of a sudden, this church building, all four walls just collapsed. And all the people that were in, sitting in the pews in this church building hit the streets. And that, that this is the time further confirmation. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have the vision pulled up because I had it and it went away. But this is the time where the church literally has left the building. Amen. So that was from 2016, which is funny because the Lord, you know, Facebook will bring up your past memories. And so I reposted that because, because that's what the Lord is doing is he wants us to get up out of the pews and hit the streets. Amen. 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 That is so good. And um, I'm just going to take, since we're equipping center, I think this is a beautiful thing for some people may not know the difference. So um, there's two exact prophetic flows, and they flow different. Um, Michelle flows in what's called a knobby flow where the words come. God just downloads words, and she does. That's, that's a bigger part of my flow is that way. And Carrie is a seer, and she gets pictures. Some people get dreams. Some people um, have a literal vision or a night vision. But that is also, and then God gives her words, like she gets understanding from the Lord of what these visions mean. And so some seers don't necessarily have the language to interpret. And that's not to be scared about. That just means God's going to show you. You're just at the beginning phases because God will give you language because he wants you to know what you see. So I just felt like there might be some here that might not understand the two and that's the biggest question because I say this because God does speak to everybody. Paul says you can all prophesy and to covet prophecy. And why I believe he speaks that is because he wants us to know we can hear straight from him because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and the Holy Spirit is God and he's inside. So I want to encourage you when you think um, you might get a picture or you might get a word, you need to, to step out and, and share that because that's God and he's speaking through you. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get. And um, who knows where he'll take you. So you might become a preacher or you might just be a street evangelist. Actually, we need more of us outside, honestly. It looks like we're all going to be outside anyway, <laughs> one way or another. So, um, do you, anybody else have a corporate word? Okay, we're going to transition really quick. Um, we have some personal words. I invite Chris over, and I'm going to start. Um, the Lord, while we were, gave me something for you and what I, I saw over you. I met you last week, but tell me your name again. My name is Bill. Bill. And what, because I said I knew your name, last name, but I don't know that we know each other. But anyway, I just saw business. I saw the Lord like hovering over you with business. And the Lord said he's going to make a new provision for you in this season for you not to be stressed or concerned about some changes that may have occurred during this season, but that he's anointing you and equipping you for something new because he has a new thing he wants you to do because this new avenue of business is going to open up the ministry call over your life because there's a ministry call that you sort of laid aside because you had to provide, you had to do the things that were wise, but the Lord said he has a desire to use that gift. But in this season of transition of business, he wants to, um, there's a people that he wants you to minister to. You have a strong teaching gift and he wants to use that teaching gift, but he's going to use you like an equipper 
with this teaching gift. You're actually going to disciple people in how and what it means to be a disciple of Christ because of the depth that you carry in the things of God. So don't look to the past as far as how some of those situations worked out spiritually um, because this is a new season and his anointing is on you and he loves you. He is well pleased with you. So um, he is this new season in business is actually just a whole new way to live. So you're welcome. The phrase the Lord gave me for you was that he is well pleased with you. And it, and he showed me a picture of a book I read a long time ago called Practicing the Presence of God. And I tried, and I was like, what was that about again? And the Lord reminded me it was about a man who learned to experience God's presence in the everyday simple areas of his life. And the Lord wanted me to encourage you by saying he enjoys those times with you, that you are a man who practices the presence of God, and that's where that depth comes from. It's, it's a simplicity also, which is beautiful for discipleship. So I just speak God's blessings Amen. over you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, would you go with it? Okay, yeah. I have a couple for Will's daughters. Can I give y'all words? Okay. So Gabby, right? Okay. Your word is an encouragement. Um, there's things that you are wrestling with, frustrations, and the Lord wants me to encourage you. As soon as I met you, I could see that the Lord has gifted you to be a leader in the kingdom. And those frustrations are part of your sifting. It's, it's developing discernment in you, which is necessary for every good leader to have. So keep asking why. Allow yourself to be frustrated without being frustrated at God. And keep asking why. Why God? And he will answer you. And in those answers, he's sharpening you and he's honing you and he's preparing you to, le- to be the leader that he's called you to be. So I just want to speak. Up. Can, I touch, can I touch you? Okay. <laughs> So, Father, we just thank you for Gabby. We thank you for her heart. We thank you for the clarity that you give her and that you are giving her more, Father. And we just ask for you to release from your vaults of heaven all the gifts that you have for her, Father God, the discernment and the compassion that she has for other people, Lord. We ask you to take this frustration and turn it into something beautiful that will benefit us all and draw many into the kingdom. Speak your blessing over her in the name of Jesus. And then I didn't get your name before. Sophie. So I saw a picture of you, and you were on like a subway car. And there were a lot of people around, and you were very aware of them. But then you put some headphones on, and you began just to dance this most beautiful dance. And you were so free. And the Lord reminded me of the verse, it is for freedom you have set free. And there's a freedom that he's going to bring, not just to you, but through you to other people. And when you first started to dance, the other, it made the other people uncomfortable. And they kind of looked at you like, why is she dancing on the subway? But you began to touch them, and they became free. And so this is part of your gift, this freedom in the Lord. And I think that the headphones are significant because I think it comes through realizing who God is through worship music. So as you're listening... Ask God, like you're going to ask God, why, God? Ask God, who are you? Who are you, God? And ask him to reveal that to you as you worship. And don't be afraid to dance as you worship. So to confirm that, I saw um, the Lord told me that you're a worshiper, that he's called you as a worshiper, and he has anointed you with the vocal cords to do that. And so that dance and worship, it all fits together. That means you're going to be a chain breaker, for people. When people come in to worship, things just in the, in the heavenlies, things break. And um, there's a, a real power. And um, so now, are you the one that's 16 that drives? Okay. So, um, so you're, you've got a strong anointing to understand the Word of God. You are a seer. You see spiritually. You are... Um, you're very connected to God, but you're, but you're not, you're abstract. You're not linear. You see God differently because of the seer gifting. So often it makes you feel like you don't fit. 
you're not really fitting because there's a certain way that it's kind of set up that you have to see God or people have said, but that's not God at all. That's religion. Unfortunately, we all have a little of it. We stick around long enough, we get it. But, but the Lord has created you with such uniqueness. And I'll also see um, acting. You can act. You have a lot of drama, a lot of things like that. That's part of your understanding and your seer anointing. That's why he put that in you. So just know this. He's, he is raising you up for leadership, and it's not going to be boring. And seriously, with a dad like that, it'll never be boring. <laughs> Your dad's awesome. So, um, so just hang. He's going to show you. You don't have to be in anybody's box because he's doing something special. So just he'll reveal himself. You're welcome. Amen. Does anybody else Yeah, I got have something any? to tag okay. on to that, actually. But, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. What, what was your name again? Sophia, okay. So when she was talking about the headphones, I actually got a little bit different picture with the headphones. I, I saw that as a part of, um, you know, when you're in the world and, you know, like I said, you're on, you're, on, you're on that subway and you're in the world, your act of putting on the headphones was actually so you could hear the Lord and that the Lord was speaking through the headphones, and that when you got into that situation, that, you know, you were able to direct your, your hearing to him, and that that was where your attention was, then that gave you the ability to minister in his spirit and start touching the people around you, setting people free, delivering, and all the rest of that. So I would just in, encourage, you know, listen, listen. Listen to the Lord. Listen to what, what, what he's telling you to do and try to work out the way of minimizing the distractions like putting on the headphones of the Lord, I guess. So, <laughs> so all right, that was it. We are um, kind of over our time limit, but I'm gonna, I have to give you a word. So what's your name again? I knew you came last week, right? Wanda, okay, I didn't get to meet you. Um, I just keep hearing the word intercessor, that the Lord has called you as an intercessor. And the Lord wants you to know that your prayers do make a difference, that your prayers touch the heavenlies because you carry his heart for people. And you're very connected with those that you pray for. And that is part of the gift that he's unlocked. You carry love. You carry a strong gift of love and it's powerful. And so the Lord said, continue to intercede. He's going to give you strategy. I even see you with a group of people that you're involved in. You're going to head up some strategic prayers as we get closer and closer to the ending of this year. And these prayers are going to absolutely are essential. These are essential prayers. They're big picture prayers over what's concerning here in America and the earth. Um, but, um, but he's going to strategically set you in the, in the place to pray. So, so um, all right. Well, I am, we're going to close because it's kind of late. We didn't get to um, speak over everybody. But great message, timely. So, um, Father God, we just thank you for tonight, and we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for the team. Lord, it's so much more beautiful than when we, when we can come together and individually express what you're saying, Father, because we are a corporate body. We are collective, and apart, it, it, we're, we don't get the full picture, but together we get to see you more clearly. So, Father, I thank you for that gift. I thank you for this place, and I thank you for each and every one of these. Father, I thank you that tonight, if anyone was seeking a word from God and didn't get it, I pray, Father, that you will give them what they need. And then, Lord, I ask you to keep each of us safe, continue to make a way, provide, encourage, lead, and guide us. Lord, let us be present in this moment and season. In Jesus' name, we love you. Love you, Lord. Amen. <laughs>